Hello and welcome to this week's Simon. I'm Swati. And I'm Joao. Of the Scientific Affairs team. Today we're going to do something very novel. We're going to talk about the origin of dogs and a cancer with a very ancient lineage. So who doesn't love dogs? So uh, let's start with the Thalman paper and um, uh, look at the history of, of dogs. And the history of dogs, of course, really is very tightly intertwined with the, um, the domestication of dogs. So um, in the Thalman paper looked at the mitochondrial DNA of 18 prehistoric dogs from Eurasia and the New World, along with a comprehensive panel of modern dogs uh, as well as wolves. So um, it looks like the molecular dating suggests that um, domestication occurred in Europe in about 18,000 to 32,000 years ago. Right, and there's a giant phenotypic variation due to the enormous inbreeding that we've been doing to have those specific cute breed dogs that we like. And that actually hinders simple interference or inference of these dog origins. So it's really difficult to tell where they came from just because we've been inbreeding them so much. Yeah, and just from the observation, because uh, a, a really small dog and a really big dog could be genetically very closely related. So um, the results uh, suggest that the, um, the uh, mitochondrial uh, DNA uh, indicate that the dogs are generally fra uh, originated from wolves from European origin. And, um, and it also suggests that domestication was not unique to one place at one time, but was an early and singular event that occurred everywhere at the same time. You know, that's a really good point, because uh, we tend to think of, of history as a very linear process, but it really isn't. It, it tends to be happening in the same, the same process happens in many different places. And sometimes it works out, and other times it doesn't. <laughs> it's true. And uh, so there, there are many sort of dead ends that, that uh, they come across. And, um, but the other part that, that I thought was really interesting was a recent paper by Much Mutchison. And um, it really is about a, a transmissible cancer, which is in fact the oldest cell line if you really think about it. <laughs> now, you don't tend to think about cancer as being transmissible, so um, that actually makes this pretty unusual. The only other transmissible cancer is uh, a very well-known study uh, on the um, Tasmanian devil oh, that wow. was published a couple of years ago. Oh, wow, that's exciting. Uh, well, it's not very exciting for the Tasmanian <laughs> devils. Not really. Um, th they uh, have this transmissible cancer uh, where they actually, because they're so closely related, they're almost clones. So I they see. have, they um, transmit this tumor from biting each other's faces. Um, th that's how they show love. <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> Uh, true. Uh, <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> but, um, and, but let's get back to, to the... Um, Murchison the, paper. The Murchison paper, yes. You know, it's, it's good that this paper has actually refined the origin and evolution of this cancer all the way back to when it started. They, they started off with doing whole genome sequencing on the high seek and found that unlike human cancers, these cancers were genomically stable, which is rather interesting. And they identified four mutational signatures in these cancers, three of which are found in human cancers too. One of them is correlated with patient age, one has an unknown etiology, but one that corresponds to UV damage and is actually comprises of 42 mutations in, these, in this cancer. So finally, the authors identified that this cancer first arose, hold your chairs, 11,000 years ago, and it's still there today. Yes, and if you think about it, these, these are, this is a clonal cell line. So, so this is an 11,000 year old, old cell, cell line, line. <laughs> which is pretty amazing. So, and, and that's really what is so amazing about the technology is that whole genome sequencing can really help you uh, see these, um, how these age genotypes uh, developed over a long period of time. It also gives you an idea of um, sort of what is the essence, what is the minimal set of genes that you need to, um, to, to actually be a cell or be a tumor. Very true. So, um, but we were talking about the long um, cell, uh, the lines. Long cell lines. But let's, it, let's talk about the short one, Job. <laughs> why, why don't we? So Snuppy, the first clone dog, was created using one cell from the ear of an adult Af Afghan dog. How, how, how neat <laughs> is that? That's pretty exciting. Yeah, Kim et al. performed the whole genome uh, sequencing uh, from the cloned and the donor dogs and tried to see what the variations were because we, uh, there's normally some few somatic mutations between um, 
uh, identical twins and uh, also of course then the epigenetic changes. Of course and they wanted to see if there were any changes in clone dogs so after whole genome sequencing they identified that actually clone dogs were more or had higher genomic similarity than monozygotic identical twins, which is pretty interesting. And, you know, this, this promotes the use of clone animals to be, you know, used in studies where environmental effects can be studied on the epigenome and then can lead to disease in one but not the other. Now, the Illumina platform can not only be used to study the genomes, but can be used to study the epigenomes as well in future studies. Yep, but we're out of time, Again, as usual. we're sorry. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Please uh, contact us. We love to hear back from you uh, if you've got any concerns or feedback. And uh, goodbye for now.